Boom. Boom. <laughs> Love it. Let's do it. Let's drill it. Woo. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Jay, Boom. how you in. doing? Yeah, Jay doing Bregman. Great. Doing great. Really happy to be here. Awesome. Well, Dude, it's great stoked. to have you. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. A lot of uh, – we can – Go into some insure tech stuff. I uh, love love to hear about the new technologies that are on the horizon here, and uh, and a great story uh, here. But first, Jay, we're gonna dive into speed breakers. Ooh. I don't know if you've listened to the show before, but everybody yes. gets to run. Oh, okay. Well, then you've you may have prepped a little bit. You may have pass. a under <laughs> pass pass pass. <laughs> All right, so. Time on the clock. Let's go. Jay, have you ever had a mullet? No. First crush? Ooh, uh, Alicia Silverstone. Nice. First, Ooh, nice. Uh, our most embarrassing thing your mom ever caught you doing? <sighs> too dirty for this show. Yes, perfect. The fastest speed Honestly. ever driven. Uh, 120. Nice. That's that's respectable. Favorite cereal? Uh, so Bob's Red Mill Muesli. Ooh. How many kids? Nice. Have you he made cry? <laughs> <He's waiting. laughs> Love it. You did yeah. wait for the <laughs> Count Chocula or Count Dracula? Uh, Count Dracula. Mm. And the fastest mile. That was my Dracula impression. Oh, yes, yes. The fastest mile. Oh, my fastest mile. Yeah, uh, you're fast. Yeah, let, let, let's say um, eight minutes. Okay. Favorite flavor? Nice. Butter pecan. Dogs or cats? Mm. Dogs. That's correct. Ta tacos or burritos? Burritos. Favorite video game? Command and Conquer. And it still always comes up, Trump or Biden. Pass. <laughs> you don't have to answer. Pass, correct. <laughs> awesome. And I'll toss nice. it over to Jason, and then we'll dive in. Yes, Jay, what was the first concert you ever went to? All the way Grateful, back to Barney. Grateful Dead, Madison Square Garden, 1992. Oh, well, that's very interesting. <laughs> nice. That is very interesting. What, what year? That what is was it? Greg's favorite band. 1992. So, 92. Uh, Fat Jerry. It was a full band. It was, uh, you know, the full experience. Uh, I was still in high school, but uh, it was, yeah, it was a great first concert. Who, um, who was on keyboard? Don't remember. You remember? No, I think huh. it was Horns. It might have been Hornsby. Does anybody know the keyboardist? Is that well? Yeah. There's with the dead. There's a whole thing about the keyboardist. It's like that. That means you're on deck to die if you're one of the keyboardists for the dead. So, <laughs> yeah, very storied. <laughs> Uh, thing about that. So why don't you take us back? Uh, you're, you got a great story going all the way back, but how did you end up even becoming part of the insurance industry? Let's dive in there. So my last business, uh, so I've started a couple of businesses in my career. I've been a career entrepreneur. Um, and so my last business was a, a ride sharing company in London uh, called Halo. Uh, oh. And that was eventually sold to, to Daimler. Uh, and so one of the things that I noticed while we were building that company was just how differently small businesses were being created uh, through the use of technology, predominantly mobile technology. Uh, it wasn't just this idea that you were, you know, you, you got to get a Main Street shop and a couple of employees and an annual insurance policy and you're kind of good to go. You were dipping in and out of basically, uh, you know, creating something a lot of times just doing business on your phone. So I thought, well, look, what is going to be the blocker for this future to come true? And one of the things I kept coming into when I talked to people was insurance. Uh, you know, and so insurance wasn't changing with the times for this new breed of SMB and this new future of work to actually get realized. And so I teamed up with a friend to, to figure out how to solve that problem. Awesome. So take us. What problems take us, were you running? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right. What, what, what was the what was some of the problems you were running into uh, with with insurance specifically? Well, well, look, 
Yeah, so, so some of the issues are, you know, the purchase process, you know, an SMB, it, it, can, it can be just a single person, uh, you know, now. They're basically consumers. They're not used to the way in which uh, small business insurance is presented traditionally, which is, oh, here's something that, that's designed for people who have between five and 50 employees, and it's got 45 questions, and it takes you an hour for the broker to walk you through and, and complete. And then, oh, if you want any changes to it, you got to call up the broker. They'll call up the, uh, you know, the service center of the insurance company, uh, and, and you'll go through that entire chain to get, uh, you know, to get a um, an answer back. I, I mean, it doesn't work for the consumer, but it also doesn't work for the broker because they're going to do a ton of work to arrange and bind a pretty small policy, you know, three, four hundred mm-hmm. bucks. And then after they do that, then they've got the customer ringing them every week with a new client, adding an additional insured, and all of these things that they should be able to do themselves, but previously to, to Thimble, they couldn't. Crazy. That is a huge problem. <laughs> I've I've actually ran into that. Uh, a few of my friends starting small businesses, and our agency doesn't really specialize in that. So we we pass them off to somebody else that does it. And yes, it is time consuming. And anytime that there's changes, that agent is uh, bogged down. So yeah. interesting. Okay. So. Yeah, t- talk about so so you have a buddy. It, was he an insurance agent? He was not. He was far from an insurance agent. Uh, e- Eugene uh, was somebody I met ten years ago at Halo. He was a technical consultant. He's brilliant, um, but he's he he had been an entrepreneur too. He had co-founded a business called Diapers dot com uh, oh. that became hugely successful and was sold to Amazon in two thousand eleven. He was the chief technology officer. Uh, so uh, at the time that I got him, he was retired, but potentially interested in doing uh, other things. And we got together talking about this is a really hard problem, both a tech problem and a product problem um, and a per- people problem. Uh, and so we, we got together and started to build a team um, a couple of years ago. I think it's so interesting to to dive into the the whole notion and idea of of that entrepreneurial part of being an agent and having to come in and actually build the business. A, a lot of times agents will come in and, and then want to be the one man band and then it's not scalable, right? They, they run into a, a lot of, there's the learning curve of trying to learn everything. And then also they just, you, you can't, you can't grow if, if, if you're doing everything. So I think it would be relevant to talk about the building, like, you know, from the beginning, how did, how did you put it together? What, how did you identify? You talked about building the team. What were some of the things that you did when you were doing that and then take us all the way up to funding because i think that's a real interesting piece of it too well look so i mean the first thing is we were very disciplined and specific in how we built the business so we we first started out with a with one single uh type of profession uh which happened to be uh commercial drone pilots because at the time there were all these drone pilots that were just starting to build their business uh, but they didn't want to buy annual policies. They wanted to buy per flight policies, and that wasn't available on the market. And drone insurance was a really new thing anyway. Uh, so we built the perfect system and app for um, commercial drone pilots. We did it on an admitted basis. It's approved in all 50 states. Uh, and so when we learned how to do that, we learned everything about how to create an admitted insurance product in America, all the people we needed, all the products we needed, all the discipline we needed on the tech side. Um, and so that was sort of the, the kind of, you know, the, the precursor to uh, Thimble, which was, okay, now let's expand this out to 500 different types of business. Um, and then let's do a thousand and then let's do more and more and more. Uh, and let's build something that, um, you know, that can really uh, scale horizontally and vertically. So love it. Love yeah, it. And you went I, out, did, how did you select which, which specific uh, different business businesses to target? You said yeah, 500? Yeah, that, that was more of a, a, a kind of, um, uh, it was, a, you know, uh, not as scientific. I, I happen to be a really avid drone pilot. And so okay. when I talked to the other drone pilots and they said, damn it, I'm, like I got this great job at, you know, from Fox or from, you know, uh, at Sony Pictures, but I can't get it because I don't have the insurance. Uh, I knew that there was an opportunity, and so that was some a problem that we could solve, and it was one that I knew something about. 
Um, and it was so new that pe people wanted that, that kind of problem to be solved. Um, they didn't think it was solved already. So you basically, you, you sort of created like an, an event insurance policy, but for the drone pilot. Yeah, you could say that. And actually, it's funny that you do say that because one of the new Thimble products that's not out yet, but is coming out is actual event insurance you can uh -huh. buy from your phone. Um, with just like a couple of questions, super easy, super easy to modify, super easy to email the COI to uh, to the the uh, uh, you know the venue. And this is something that's not just built for for direct to consumer. It's actually built with agents in mind too. Uh, so you know agents can buy these policies you know from our uh, platform for the con uh, consumer, and they can access all the self service, uh, or they can even just send a link to the customer and get full commission. When the customer signs up so we've kind of built this with the agent in mind which is awesome because a lot of these policies especially for captive carriers that you go through a secondary platform and it's it's pretty you can get down the rabbit hole trying to put everything together and a lot of times like what jason said it's like ah, i just send it over to somebody else right because it's just it's it's way too much work to to make 30 bucks right it just it doesn't make sense so to have that in your back pocket i think is huge and it's an it's a it's like the gateway drug, right? You can you can offer this to get folks in the door, and then talk to them about their home and their auto and all of the other things that, that we talked about. Absolutely right. I mean, the, the, we we have seven thousand plus agents that are using this system, and, and you know they're doing it because of the the speed and flexibility, uh, you know, and control that they're getting from it. Uh, and they like to sign up the customers because then they have the customers on their books, and basically they can prospect them in the future to their liking. But they haven't done a lot of work to be able to do it, not at the expense of other things in their business. And we, we know that, uh, you know, everything always comes at the expense of something else. Mm -hmm. So if, if like, let's say, you know, let's just say my agency, if my agency signed up with Thimble, um, I'd be able to send out, it's almost like an affiliate link, right? Where it's like they sign up directly with the, the company and I would see a portion of the commission. Yeah, absolutely. And basically- or I would see the commission. It could either download the app uh, and do it, and we can track it right through the app store, or they can do it uh, on, on the web. Um, and, and then you'll get notified as soon as they actually sign up, you'll get an email that says this customer signed up, uh, here's all the details, et cetera. So it, it's, it's really pretty seamless. Um, and by the way, the, the customers love it because from the customer's perspective, it's still so much easier. And a lot of the customers, they love systems where they don't have to talk to as many people as, uh, you know, uh, as they might have to traditional. Especially for these Can smaller you... transactional things, right? Exactly. Right. Yes. Can you webhook data into Thimble? Yeah, we can. So we are, we are partnered with Angie's List, um, a company called Pure Space, uh, which is a big in the event space, uh, and about a dozen others. And we actually have a full API that allows them to, uh, to offer insurance to their pros. Uh, we also have, by the way, we have a widget for uh, brokers uh, that is actually um, on a significant number of, of websites where basically the agent can just take our um, uh, kind of code once they sign up, paste it into their website, and then there's a little booking platform that gets embedded where the customer can just sign up right on their website and it looks wow. exactly like part of their website. And as you said before, get a percentage of the commission uh, that flows through that. And then you could webhook some of that info over to your CRM and then create automation. Yeah, as you like. Mm. Love it. Uh, that reminds me of the David Carruthers conversation where he had the uh, he had an event insurance and he used that as the front end of his of his sales funnel, in which he would pretty much break even on the front end, uh, run pay, paid ads to it, break even on the front end, and then be able to cross sell on the back end. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That is, I love it. I love it. Huge opportunity, I think, for insurance agents to jump on and be able to um, use it as a, as a huge tool and time saver of something that <laughs> is not the best use of our time, especially when you're switching over those uh, event insurance is nuts, man. Like it's so oh. little. And some people are you know, at swap meets once a week or four events a week, and they're constantly changing all that stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And it is a huge pain point for the for the person too. I know one one of my buddies was doing that. He was doing um 
uh, farmers markets and stuff. And he kept having to get this, get, get the insurance and changing the info and, and the, the time it, it wasn't even so much as the pain with the agent. Um, so I sent it to my agent buddy, uh, it wasn't even so much the, I mean, there was a pain between the agent and him like time-wise, but the real pain point was, was the time that like, if he could just fill it in a, uh, on an app or something, he would do it. Like it would eliminate the need to even talk to the, to the other dude. So that would have been huge. Absolutely. We'll get him on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like agents, agents kind of back to what I was saying before, they, they think that they, that it serves themselves by helping as many people as possible with as many things as possible. And it just really bogs everybody down. And, and if you're looking at, at something that, you know, a couple hundred dollar policy, you're making 20 bucks and, and, and now there's these multiple additional insureds changes and printing out certificates. I mean, the cost of, of trying to manage something like that is, is incredible versus what you're bringing in. And just to be efficient, this is a really, really interesting tool that I think uh, folks should be looking at. So how would somebody go about finding the app, uh, going to the website, learning more? What What is all the so details? If you go to symbol.com or symbol.com forward slash broker, uh, that has uh, all the information. You can also, if you want to play around with the app, which a lot of agents do, uh, you just search for Thimble on the App Store. Uh, we're actually the only app that allows you to buy and manage business insurance. Um, wow. Yeah, believe it or not. Cool. You can bind it right there on the uh, app? Yeah, about 30% of our customers actually bind it directly on wow. the app. Wow. Super cool. Super cool. Um, do you have to be an agent to get the affiliate good, good question so so actually no uh so we have two levels we have a, a kind of a referral program where basically you get all of the benefits including commission uh, but you don't have to be appointed and then we have uh an appointed program which we've just started right now uh, which is basically allows you uh, some additional functionality features and commission rates that aren't available uh on the, the uh, regular system but uh, we can do both is the bottom line. And there, so the, and then you guys are the underwriter or who, who do you, who writes the. Yeah. So, so we, uh, so uh, we are an MGA. We use uh, state national uh, paper, okay. which is part of Markel group. Uh, and Markel is uh, our reinsurer. So Markel group is, is uh, or Markel Re is, is hundred percent reinsuring uh, all of our work. So it's, it's really good paper um, with a really solid partner. Nice. Super cool. Jay, I want to dive a, a little bit backwards and a little bit deeper on. So you, you've been a part of a few different startups that have been um, very successful. What have you learned throughout the years that have that has been able to expedite, uh, I would say, Thimble more so than some of your earlier ventures? Yeah, well, look, so, uh, you know, I think it's more of understanding that uh, these things take a long time to build right, right? Like you really want to build things. In the beginning, I think I was more, uh, you know, more thinking about how do we build to be able to sell the business or how do we be able to build, you know, build it really quickly for a, a reason to be able to somehow flip it. Um, and now, you know, I think about building for the long term and building value and infrastructure and everything for the long term. But, you know, look, be, being an entrepreneur, I mean, it's it's about endurance, right? Like things never go right. Never, ever, ever go <laughs> right. right. Uh, it is, it is <laughs> right. the amount of time that, that they go right. Uh, the rest of the time, uh, you know, they go wrong in, in spectacular ways. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but but I, I guess the difference between the past and today is I recognize that, I accept it. And so basically when it happens, I'm not surprised. Um, yeah. I think what, that what is gives very, the... very wise right there because it, it, yeah. sorry to cut you off, Jason, but I mean, it is, it, it is a hundred percent true, right? There's always something that goes wrong and then it's like, okay, it's this today and you just have to go with it. Yeah. And I, yep. look, I, I empathize with, with all of the, the agents out there who are entrepreneurs, you know, with, with their own businesses, because I mean, anything can happen. People, staff can leave, you know, uh, markets can change. It, it's just it's any number of things that can happen that are totally out of your control. Um, but you got to ride through uh, and, and uh, you know get to the other side. 
What have, what has been some of those things that uh, has given you endurance, especially with all the, I mean, I'm sure you've had your back against the wall <laughs> many times throughout your, your time. Well, look, uh, so, you know, I, I think there is the, the belief that is kind of now ingrained in me that, that things will get better. They might not necessarily get better tomorrow, but if you keep having the best team, if you keep having the best product, uh, you know, if you keep having the best partners, um, that over time, you know, things will go your way. Uh, and I think mm. that that's really all you can hope for. Um, everything else is just noise. Love it. Love it. Um, so this is the big final question. Um, everything that you've learned with throughout your entrepreneurial journey and then everything that you've seen with insurance agents since you've uh, been on your journey with Thimble, what would be the number one piece of advice for the entrepreneur insurance agent that's either been in the industry for a while or somebody that's coming into it and really wants to grow their business? So, you know, I, I guess from what I can see, uh, you know, insurance is a very complex uh, kind of sclerotic, uh, you know, industry. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, you really got to go and roll with the, uh, the punches, but also you've got to, when new technologies or systems arise uh, and, and, you know, come about, you, you can't be afraid to be the first or among the first to seize on them. So I think basically in, a, in an industry like this, the, the first movers actually wind up doing a lot better than the people that say, okay, things are going great and let's just wait a couple of years to see how that, that kind of pans out. Um, because the market, the, the insurance might, might not be changing that quickly, but the underlying customer um, dynamics in a lot of cases, how people buy insurance is changing pretty radically. And so I think as an agent, you have to figure out how you're gonna be ahead of that curve. And I think you're in a great position you know, all this insure tech can be your friend, can be enabling yeah. you uh, to do better than you have ever done before. I mean, have us work for you. We have tons of product managers and engineers that are working to make life easier for, for you. Uh, so just embrace that. Love it. It's like it's like Batman's utility belt. Build it. <laughs> exactly. get, get a bigger belt. <laughs> awesome. Cool, Jay. man. Jay Bregman, thank you so much uh, for, for jumping on. And one more time, uh, it's Thimble, at, available at the App Store, and the website uh, for the listeners. So Thimble.com and Thimble.com forward slash broker. Okay. And then your cell phone in case anybody has any tech issues. <laughs> <laughs> you can awesome. email me anytime at, at, at j at Thimble.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's been awesome to have you on and we look forward to checking in down the road. I love that. Thank you very much. Okay. See ya. Cool. Bye. Thank you, Jay.